The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Brought to you by... You're in a Bojangles town, Greenville, home of the Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's boat time. Bojangles, title sponsor for the Frankie DeBusk Show. Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, home of the big deal, located on the 11E Bypass in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Greenville Federal Bank, celebrating over 50 years of service in Greenville and Green County. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Tusculum Pioneers in a heartbreaking loss of some ways fall to the Wingate Bulldogs this past Saturday. Hello everyone, welcome to the Frankie DeBus Show presented by Bojangles. I'm Brian Staten. Well, the Tusculum Pioneers had a last ditch opportunity to at least attempt to tie the football game against Wingate. But John Jimenez saves the day for the Bulldogs and Wingate wins by a final of 41 to 33. Record-breaking performance last week. We were talking about Bo Cordell's pursuit of the all-time Division II passing mark. He would get that in this game. Brian Alexander also chasing a school record in tackles. He wouldn't quite get there, but another school record was set as Justin Houston electrified the crowd just at the very beginning, the opening kickoff returned 99 yards. Now the fans definitely got their money's worth because the Pioneers nearly erased a 16-point deficit in the final two minutes and 15 seconds. But as mentioned, John Jimenez saves the day and knocks away a fourth down pass attempt into the end zone intended for West Powell. We'll talk about that with head coach Frankie DeBus when we return right after this. This is the Frankie DeBus Show presented by Bojangles. That's a wrap, Scotty. Let's break for lunch, guys. All right, it's boat time. Cajun filet sandwich. Right here. Hey, I had a Cajun filet sandwich. Hey, relax, man. We got more. Smoked sausage biscuit. That's me. But you have a Cajun filet sandwich. So what's your point? Man, you can't have breakfast and lunch together. That doesn't work. Works for me. I call it brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Bojangles and try our seasoned hickory flavored smoked sausage on a made from scratch biscuit for just 99 cents. Bojangles, it's boat time. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles, Tusculum versus Wingate, as these two schools would square off for the 18th time. Pioneers, though, had dropped four of the last five against Wingate, but the last time they won was at home, a 38-20 final. Bo Cordell, part of the day in the loss column, because two years ago it was Tory Slavin leading the Tusculum Pioneers to that victory. So Bo looking for a win, but a lot of things on the line on Saturday, no question. Joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. This not Tusculum versus Catawba, but five of the last nine have been decided by at least six points or less. It's not necessarily when these two teams get together your highest scoring games typically, but Saturday was a little bit of a different feel, especially early. Guys got off the type of start you needed to, just couldn't sustain it. I really, I thought our kids were excited about playing. We made some big plays early. Uh, we didn't exactly do our part uh, on both sides of the ball, but we got excited special teams wise. And, 
some good things happen when we take the opening kickoff back. And I actually said I'd like to look at a stat and see if uh, if the team that takes the opening kickoff back wins or not. Because you, you get excited, you make <laughs> yeah. a big play, and then you sort of have a letdown. And then, you know, we, we let them come down the field and score on us in their next possession. And all of a sudden, it's a tie ball game again. So uh, we did a lot of good things. We did a lot of good things early. You know, Brian, you mentioned it, it, it may not be this, it may not be that. That's sort of the way the season's gone. I mean, right. it's so close to us being successful, we're just not quite doing what we need to do. Ifs and nuts were candy. Ifs and buts were candy and nuts, I think, <laughs> is the, uh, the thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at your first half highlights. We'll talk about a whole lot more of this game as we go on. Your first half highlights presented by Bojangles. We're struggling, Brian. We got some internal uh, fife. Whenever you don't have, when you don't have success, there's always reasons, there's always problems. Uh, it's like a big family. You know, your families never get along 100% uh, of the time. And, uh, we just we got to get on the same page. There's so many winners on our football team, and so many people wanting to be successful, and so many, you know, coaches wanting to find a way to win. It just starts from top to bottom. And you know, we watched the film on Saturday, and uh, we're, we're we're ten guys are doing what they're supposed to, and the eleventh guy's costing us a big play. And we got to figure out a way to eliminate that. It is. A, it was a glorious day, Chamber of Commerce type day, as I talked about. As your team takes the field here, it is. Um, I guess what you could almost say too. Um, a team, not necessarily built of destiny, but the way this thing got started, you thought, well, this could be, we could be in for something very special. It was a special day for the Pioneers, a weekend. It was Breast Cancer Awareness Game, Sports Hall of Fame weekend, Parents Weekend. Uh, you see the captains going out to uh, take the opening coin toss with the very special guest. And, uh, you know, all NCAAs, uh, all schools doing their part in breast cancer awareness. Uh, you know, if you look at our field there, the pink on there from Tusculum, that's Chad Grindstaff and Buster Scott and Med Turtle Mays and David Martin and his crowd. Jeff Hayes got in on the mix. I think Walt Manuel was in. It just, they just do a phenomenal job getting our field looking like that. And this is opening kickoff. You want to be electrifying. You want some good things to happen. And you know, here's Justin Houston. Thank goodness Justin is just a sophomore and got some guys doing their part blocking downfield. It looks like Dominique James doing his part. And I'm not even sure who that is trying to get a piece there flying around. But uh, you know, we do a great job letting our blockers. That's our starting running back, Isaac Robinson, getting the block and. Here's Caleb McCormick, a freshman from down in Florida, running down the field, getting a block. And we've got a lot of guys doing what we ask them to do. And Justin's letting it happen and letting it set up. And we're being smart, not getting penalties. And we got a great 99-yard uh, opening kickoff return. Jamaica Caldwell had a 98-yard return, not for a touchdown. That's the longest return for a touchdown, surpassing the longest touchdown kickoff return set by Ricardo Coakley. Remember what game that was? Morehouse. Morehouse. He had two of them, 97 and 94. Big hit, Dominic James, on the ensuing kickoff. Great hit. Just coming off a block, Dominic James, a junior from down in Florida. A big dog winner. I uh, love seeing him do that. He's done that about four times on kickoff team this year. and Just does a good job for us. Happy he's getting downfield. Happy he's making plays. And there, John Perry, another Floridian, gets a little excited and puts him on his back. But I'm sure they talked about that on Saturday night. I put that in there because I thought, well, he gives the big hit, and then he got one. hit. <laughs> well, the Wingate Bulldogs, though, would take their time, be very patient, and they would actually score on their opening possession, seven plays, 71 yards. Didn't do our part right there. We had a young man that's one of our starters not covering who he's supposed to cover and uh, getting me a little excited, I guess. But we got to do a little bit better job uh, when it's our opportunities to make plays. Offensively, the Pioneers would take the field and be unable to – uh, move it past their own 39-yard line, so punted it away. First and 10, uh, second down and 10, hit Funderburg for a big 23-yard game. But second and 15, Nelesnik drops the pass, hurried, though, by Josh Davis, and that was your game plan, try to get pressure on Nolenweg. Yeah, we didn't get enough pressure on him. I really thought we could do a little better job there. And He does a good job standing in the pocket, delivering the football, making throws. Here I think Evan Dansby's doing his part at corner, covering him up. and. It'll make them punt the football and give us an opportunity offensively. So the Pioneers would take the football first and 10 from their own 27 after a punt of 44 yards. And Fernando Smith, to the left of Bo Cordell, starts this, this drive with a big nine-yard run. I tell you, Fernando's running the ball so hard. He's just 18-year-old freshman. Happy he's going to be around for a while. Just really, really pleased with our running back position. And here we hit Deion Hicks out here on a quick stop route. And Deion's a junior from out in California. And... Uh, Still making some good plays. We just got to keep it going. Deion Hicks would uh, factor prominently at the end of this contest, and we'll get to that. Justin Houston, one of his 11 catches for just two yards. Um, Big West Powell, boy, it's tough to bring him down. A lot of guys trying to jump on his back there, and at six foot ten, it is hard to bring him down. And Bo does a great job drawing him off sides here, and uh, we had this called, and uh, fortunately we've practiced it enough, and. Bo and Dion are on the same page, and if, if he's got him beat deep, we'll throw it deep. If he's not, we'll back shoulder it and 
Do a great, that's a great ball and a great catch and a great job converting. Setting the all-time Division II record with that pass right there, 14,747 yards, the 20-yard completion to Deion Hicks. Bo Cordell, Deion Hicks forever linked in Division II history, I guess, as you could say, with the uh, record-breaking performance right there. First down and 10 would look for Deion Hicks, and uh, Bo may be a little excited on this throw, threw it a little bit too far. Yeah, just a little bit too much downfield, and that's going to happen. Here's Fernando, man, sticking it up in there. People don't realize how big those four and five yards are. Uh, we're doing a great job protecting up front. Bo's buying time and you know, stepping up in the pocket, and Justin Houston runs a good route. Bo makes a great throw. Justin makes a great catch and gives us another touchdown. Justin Houston with his second touchdown already of the first quarter, and the Pioneers would take a lead. Botch the uh, point after by Cameron Talent, yelling whatever they yell, fire, uh, would find West Powell for the two-point conversion. Bo Cordell getting his recognition, and you can see the love uh, by his teammates. I tell you what, um, one year, four years, five years, however long you've been around Bo Cordell, uh, every, he's well loved. Yeah, he is. He's a great kid and you know, I, I love to see our teammates getting excited for him and you know, our offense is built around what we do and it's not Bo Cordell's, it's the Tusculum offense. His name will go down in history, but so will Tusculum College as well. Wingate, however, would respond. Pioneers eight plays, 73 yards, get a decent kickoff return and on second down and goal, Josh Covington would punch it in from a yard out, and that would make the game 15-13 to 13 as Wingate would actually miss the point after. So the ensuing drive for the Pioneers. We've seen Fernando Smith, 13 carries on the day. We now see Isaac Robinson and a nine-yard carry on first down. Another great running back that's a freshman. Uh, that position is strong right now. And we put Shane Patterson in here in a little while. He was a sophomore, does some great things. But here Isaac does a good job cutting and Best thing he did right there was lower his shoulder and get three or four yards. This is a phenomenal play by Logan Haynes. Just snaps a little high. Uh, Logan is, is athletic enough to tuck it and run and get a big first down. And I know he's excited. And a lot of the players were telling me, great call, Coach. Well, I didn't have anything to do with that call. It <laughs> yeah, was just that an be. athlete being an athlete, making a big play. And happy for him right there. So big fourth down after a somewhat of a high snap. And Logan Haynes picks up the first down. Isaac Robinson, five carries, 24 yards on the day. Fernando Smith, 13 carries, 44 yards on the day. But it's tough to bring him down first contact. It's yards after the contact for these two running backs. And they do a great job with that. And, and, and they just keep hanging in there. And Bo lets this one go a little bit more. We're going to hit Dion probably for a touchdown. And uh, we just got to we got to connect when we got to connect. Bo Cordell un, unable to hit Hicks. But D, uh, Isaac Robinson, again, you're not afraid. Even if it's second down, 15, there was a penalty. Uh, give it to him, and he's just tackled by the ankles uh, this particular time. Then Cordell steps up in the pocket, buys a little extra time, and finds a wide open Justin Houston. Yeah, this is a great ball. He, uh, Bo didn't get excited. Pretty pass in the air. Justin keeps running his route, finds a way to get by the defenders, and gives us another touchdown. Justin Houston's third first quarter touchdown. Yes, that's how it happened this season. Justin Houston ties the record that uh, Jonathan Diliberto tied in the first game of the year, tying that of Matt Riggs for three touchdowns in a half. Unfortunately, we wouldn't find Justin Houston anymore in the game. Wingate would take the football, have great field position, and Wayne Soliai would step in front of a Nolan Wegg pass. Great play here by Wayne. Wayne is really starting to get better and better each and every week. A junior from out in California and, uh, makes a really good play here. We needed something good to happen. And, so Wayne steps in front of it. Addison Williams, our defensive back coach, is really doing a good job with those guys back there and getting them to believe in what we're trying to get accomplished. And Wayne makes a big play for us for sure. Wayne's first interception of the season again for the transfer. Finished with a big day in tackles as well for the Pioneers. And he's been doing that a lot of late. Finished with five tackles on the day. So the Pioneers have great field position from the 29. And Shane Patterson, seems like first down, nine yards gained was the norm in the first quarter. Great run by Shane. Shane's a sophomore from up in New Jersey. Just excited about him being a young kid as well. Uh, you know, he does a great job getting north and south there. Dion gets football thrown to him and does a great job following, them, following where we can get a few more yards. And, we're trying to get it to him once again. He makes a great catch. We're just a little bit too far out of the back of the end zone. and Unfortunately, got to settle for a field goal, which we got to make. We're very, very close here. It's got to be points, and, uh, and we just push it. We don't make this kick, and got to keep our head down at the kicker position and, and, and keep our uh, – we were not 100% anymore on field goals. Unfortunately, we should have made it. The Pioneers' interception – yields zero points for the Pioneers. So Tusculum still leads by a score of 22 to 13. Wingate, though, would take the next drive and would take it all the way down the field. Nestor Lantiqua, career high 144 yards on the day, would get into the end zone. They would kick it, and all of a sudden, Coach, you're in the first half, 
and you're leading at 22 to 20. It's a ball game now. I'm telling you, it's a battle. We knew it would be, and we've done some good things early offensively. We're not playing real well defensively, and here we give up a sack. We've got to do a little better job protecting. I think they got the bow four times on the day, and that's, that's just too much. We, uh, we've got to be a little bit better in certain situations. And that was on fourth down, so the Pioneers don't convert. And uh, the thing that Wingate ne not has necessarily have been doing good all season, they, they showed a little bit on Saturday, and that was their ability to run the football. Yeah, they hadn't ran it very well, and we got to do a better job. we got to get them on the ground right there. and gotta, so Our corners got to come up and be physical and make the play, and uh, they're, doing, they're doing a good job. They had a good game plan. and executed it, and that's why they're sitting here with a win. They would be stopped, however, on fourth down. They would go ahead and punt the ball away, and then Pioneer's Bo Cordell would get the ball back, and he has done this all year. Justin Houston, the amazing. One-handed grab. Uh, just I think that's the third or fourth one he's caught like that and converted. And you know, well, We had a great crowd, Brian, and a lot of people were there to see an exciting ball game, and we didn't come out on top, but great play there by Justin. Matt Levine came back after an injury to start the season. It seems like he's just been lit up. There was a, a late hit called against the uh, Bulldogs, so the Pioneers have good field position once again. It's third down and five. Go to the big tight end, West Powell. Great job just hitting him in the numbers. Great job of West catching the football and moving the chains. Pioneers second down and ten, and Bo Cordell, again, you, this entire first half, we didn't seem off whatsoever offensively. And, a lot better responding from the Carson Newman game. Justin Houston, another one of his 11 catches on the day. It's fourth down and a yard. Turn around and hand it off to Fernando Smith. He would get that hard yard needed. And, and uh, just the last two to even three years, we've been searching for somebody to do that. Into the end zone intended for Deion Hicks incomplete. And Cornelius will have another chance, this time from 24. Yeah, great job here. Good snap. Uh, Cole Walker snaps it back there. And Cam Talent puts it on the ground, and Logan Cornelius makes the kick and gives us the lead 25-20. to 20. And that is the score at the half as the Tusculum Pioneers and the Wingate Bulldogs still have an entire second half to play, but Tusculum looking real good in the first half. We're back with your second half highlights right after this. This is the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. That's a wrap, Scotty. Let's break for lunch, guys. All right, it's boat time. Cajun filet sandwich. Right here. Hey, I had a Cajun filet sandwich. Hey, relax, man. We got more. Smoked sausage biscuit. That's me. But you have a Cajun filet sandwich. So what's your point? Man, you can't have breakfast and lunch together. That doesn't work. Works for me. I call it brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Bojangles and try our seasoned hickory flavored smoked sausage on a made from scratch biscuit for just 99 cents. Bojangles, it's bow time. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tenskulum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. So Cornelius will attempt a 41-yard effort. The kick is away, end over end toward the upright, and he splits them. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. The Pioneers lead at the half by a score of 25-20. to 20. Wingate about ready to receive the football to start the second half. and uh, We talk about it all the time. You want to come out and set a tone. Uh, Wingate must have had... Uh, a little bit better chat there at halftime a little bit. They came out and established that and kind of took some momentum away from uh, it. They sure did. We're up 25-20. Uh, We're in a dog fight. They get the football and drive down the field and take the lead. And, uh, and all of a sudden, we I can feel it sort of slipping away, Brown. We just didn't play very well early in the, in the second half. All right, let's take a look at your second half highlights presented by Bojangles. Wingate would have the football, and the Pioneers would kick off to the Bulldogs and 17-yard run, 4-yard run, an 18-yard pass would put them in position. And you can see Robbie Nolanwick, I think he realizes he has a matchup to take advantage of. Alexander on the speedster read. Yeah, they make a good call there, and Brown's got to do a better job defending that guy. We knew they were going to throw that route, uh, had practiced it, and we just got to do a better job keeping him from getting inside and having that success. All right, so the Pioneers would get the football. Fernando Smith factored prominently on this drive. He'd run for 10, he would run for 9 yards, get the ball to eventually the Wingate 39-yard uh, line. And again, it was um, now you do seem just a little bit off in, in some ways. But the Pioneers, again, you move the ball, a nice little screen pass complete. Uh, things looking decent, but there just seemed to be something a little off on this particular drive. We're just not playing very well, Brian. We're uh, dropping the football there. We cannot afford to drop the football. I think we drop another one on this very drive, and things cannot happen uh, like that. we got to do better. So the Pioneers uh, would come in. Uh, third down and eight, uh, Justin Houston across the middle. Uh, things, again, 
uh, for this Pioneer football team. You seem to be moving the football, as mentioned, getting it deep into winged territory, but then you start to fall back just a little bit, incomplete to Powell, and then incomplete to Diliberto, and this one seemed to be a killer. Oh, this is a touchdown catch, Brian, that we got to make, and we don't make it. Hits him right in both hands. He's going to walk in the end zone, and unfortunately, we're not doing our part. And, uh, Players got to make plays. If they're not making plays, we got to find somebody else that'll make them. Wingate would respond after Haynes would punt the ball. It would be down at the five. This drive began at the five yard line, and for the first time on the day, Josh Davis, uh, Chaz Story, um, John Perry, these guys end up in the backfield for the Pioneers. Great play there. I think Chaz put a little pressure on him, and John Perry got him on the ground, and got to do that more and more. It's third down, and Atlanta, or pardon me, fourth down, and Robbie Nollenweg would decide to keep it not get the first down so the pioneers would begin their drive on uh, deep in their own territory at their own 15. this touchdown was set up by a high snap on the punt and haynes wasn't able to get rid of it so the bulldogs would add to their 27 to 25 lead at the end of the uh, third quarter the start of the fourth quarter now lead 34 to 25. pioneers unable to move the ball right after a 60-yard punt by Logan Haynes, Lantiqua for 16 yards, and it seemed just to be an Achilles heel for the Pioneer defense. Could not stop Lantiqua in the backfield. Yeah, he did. He was doing a good job. Here's a big play. I think that was uh, uh, Kashad Lyons. Uh, Kashad got a little upset and started making some big plays, and then unfortunately they they say we're late hitting and they're late hitting, and we got to calm everybody down. It gets a little bit out of control. We just got to keep our composure and keep playing football. This is the drive that was the most interesting drive I think I've seen in a long time. And uh, this is another one of those plays. Uh, an inadvertent whistle. No, Covington did not go down. It would have been a good call, but an inadvertent whistle blows it dead, giving the offense two options a redo or take it where the play ended, which would have been five yards behind the line. Yeah, they're not going to take that. We just. Uh we got to make sure and get them on the ground and things aren't going our way. And you know, here we, we jar the ball loose. It sure looks like a fumble to me. And I don't know that he's uh, down yet, but they sure called him down and give him the football back. You see what we see. You can't tell if the ball is loose. The line judge on that near side, you see him come in, immediately says that he's down. But if we can't see it, I'm not sure how he was able to see if the ball was loose or not. Didn't get a whole lot of help from anybody else either. The Wingate Bulldogs would keep possession and you see the frustration. Yeah, very, very frustrated, Brian. I, I couldn't even argue because I couldn't see exactly what happened, but that gum, it sure looked like a fumble to me. All right, so Wingate would keep this drive alive. Two 15-yard penalties, um, a inadvertent whistle, and a fumble given back to Wingate, and boy, they capitalized and take a 41-25 to lead. Take a lot of wind out of your sales coach because your offense unable to do anything the next drive, but your defense now starts to fly around. Yeah, we've got a little momentum. We finally got some emotion, but we've got to have it before now. Uh, they go for it here on fourth down. I think we do hold them, so we're obviously – we hadn't laid down. They, they were doing pretty good here. We just were down two scores, and our backs are truthfully against the wall, and you know nobody's given up. We just we've put ourselves in a tremendous, tremendous hole. Pioneer offense would come onto the field at down 41-25 with oh just over four minutes to play. A big 33-yard touchdown or 33-yard pass to Dion Hicks, and he would find Hicks again 26 yards on this on that reception. He finished with 133 receiving yards on the day. Here's Isaac Robinson hard right up the middle for five yards. And uh, Bo Cordell and Robinson on the same page. And Isaac would punch it in, his fifth touchdown of the year. And the Pioneers make it 41-33 on the Matt Levine two-point conversion. We're not real successful on a lot of these onside kicks, but for some reason, uh, Boy, we, we had a different gear on this onside kick yeah, from Logan. Great kick from Logan Haynes. Ball's in the air. We go after it. Everybody's trying to get to football. Matt Levine just does a great job coming up with the ball there. and Actually, he fumbles it and gets back on it. But uh, you know, we're still in the ball game. We're down eight points, and we're getting the ball right here on our side of the field. We've got to go down and score. Final two minutes, 15 seconds here is what you're seeing. Pioneers do get the onside kick down just eight points. Need somewhat of a miracle. There's some unsportsmanlike afterwards. So we get everything calmed down. And you get on the top of your screen is Dion Hicks and Bo Cordell waste very little time on the first play after the recovery and goes to Dion and goes to Dion Hicks. Great protection, good throw. Dion just does a phenomenal job watching the football, going up and get it at its highest point. Uh, just a great throw and a great catch. And Gives us a chance here inside the 10-yard line with some time left. His last catch of the day, seven receptions, 133 yards, that the long 
of 37. Isaac Robinson up the middle inside the five, now down to the one. Bo Cordell would run it, uh, maybe lose about a half yard here on third down and goal from uh, about the one yard line. And now it sets up fourth down for your team, down eight points. Bo Cordell out of the gun. Yeah, we, we made a good call, uh, made a good throw. Uh, I'm not so sure, again, this wasn't a penalty, but that guy there makes a good play. I mean, he's uh, looks like he might have had a hold of West, but we still got to go up and catch the football and give ourselves a chance. And unfortunately, we uh, we didn't do it. And I don't know if the official should really make the call at that point in time, but it sure looked like uh, looked like it should have been a penalty. And again, Brian, we, we shouldn't put ourselves in this situation. We should have made some plays earlier in the ball game to keep from being in that, that predicament. All right, in the game, obviously, Bo Cordell establishing the all-time record in, in passing yards. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. Uh, Justin Houston, another great game uh, receiving. Another good game for Deion Hicks receiving. Great game running for the Pioneers, but there's that lull in the game, unable to overcome that. Pioneers defense did some things. Comes up with the interception, obviously the onside, fourth down stops, a couple of those in the game, but not enough on this day. The Wingate Bulldogs in the 18th meeting between these two schools get their fifth win in the last six appearances against Tusculum College. My final of 41 to 33. We're back with our player spotlight. That's when we return with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. That's a wrap, Scotty. Let's break for lunch, guys. All right, it's boat time. Cajun filet sandwich. Right here. Hey, I had a Cajun filet sandwich. Hey, relax, man. We got more. Smoked sausage biscuit. That's me. But you have a Cajun filet sandwich. So what's your point? Man, you can't have breakfast and lunch together. That doesn't work. Works for me. I call it brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Bojangles and try our seasoned hickory flavored smoked sausage on a made from scratch biscuit for just 99 cents. Bojangles, it's bo time. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show presented by Bojangles. The pioneers fall to Wingate this past Saturday. It's time now for our player spotlight presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. After the game, I had a chance to catch up, which, catch up with the new record holder in Division II passing history, Bo Cordell. For our player profile, Bo Cordell establishing a new Division II record in passing, breaking the old record held by Zach Amidro, 14,733 yards. Now it was easy, uh, somewhat, but we had to wait a little bit. Right. Uh, in the game, Justin Houston takes the opening kickoff, 99 yards. That established the first record of the day, by the way. Longest kickoff return in school history. So what's it like sitting over there, the anticipation of waiting to get on the field as an offense? Uh, it, it's always like that whenever we can take a kickoff like that. But when you can score seven points without getting on the field it's it's, it's very helpful to an offense's uh, mentality and attitude and uh, I try not to think about the record but you know I did a little bit my first couple passes were a little were a little bad but you know it is what it is we got going and uh, we started making plays towards the uh, early part middle part of the game was there a, a, a pool this week of guys thinking that they would be linked to you in history during practice yeah I think so <laughs> I was I was trying to take some money bets and stuff but no uh, the receivers did a great job they're unselfish and uh, they knew eventually it was gonna happen only 34 yards we throw for like 350 a game so uh, they did a great job being unselfish and you know whoever I threw the ball to they caught the ball well today all right the game itself uh, good start obviously offensively you guys put up 22 points in that first quarter did they do something to change your attack and uh, did they do a good job adjusting to what how you guys attack them in the game to really keep you out of the end zone until the fourth quarter I think I think we really stopped ourselves today you know I know we dropped the touchdown pass I was off a little bit today made a couple throws I usually wouldn't make and you know the running backs did a great job I think we ran for over 100 yards and off Offense line hung and tough, and you know when your starting left tackle goes out at the end of the game, and the offensive line just keeps doing a good job, and just a testament to everything we've done offensively and all the plays that Coach Cole calls. He put us in a situation to win at the end of the game. We just weren't able to do it. A uh, good defensive line against a, you know your offensive line. You complimented them nicely. They did spend some time in the backfield. How aggressive were they? Were they the better defensive line that you've seen this year? Uh, I don't know if they were the best. I think LR would probably be the best, but nine, number nine had 
had a heck of a matchup with David Davis, and David Davis did a great job all day. You know, he, he number nine hit me a few times, but uh, <laughs> I got to know him pretty well. But, you know, he, he was a great guy. I love talking trash to him a little bit. And uh, just a testament to how good their D-line is and really a testament to how good our offensive line is. All right, it's a game that obviously full of emotion. A crazy ending defensively. It looked like we had the football. We didn't have the football. You score the touchdown. You get the onside kick. Talk about the wave of emotion. Is that just college football for you? Yeah, it's just college football. It's always a wave. It always has been. And like I said, we, we got to put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, uh, Logan Cornelius does a great job, gets us the ball. Matt Levine makes a play. Dion makes a couple plays at the end of the game. And, you know, when, we're, when you end on the two-yard line, it, it hurts pretty bad. And we got to find a way to get in the end zone. And for the next three games, we're going to have to do that. All right, next three games. Uh, what's it going to take for this team? Well, I don't know if we could have any better motivation than playing a top-10 team in the country in UNC Pembroke. They're going to come in, and, you know, they're, they're probably going to think we're not very good. And, you know, hopefully we can hit them in the mouth a little bit and, and beat them and hurt their playoff ranking a little bit. Well, and congratulations. It's been a pleasure. We still have three games to go, so let's go get wins, okay? Still got some games left. Pre pleasure's all mine. I appreciate it. That's Bo Cordell, our player spotlight for the Frankie DeBus Show. Our player spotlight presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. It's time now for our players of the week, and we'll start offensively with the Sodexo Offensive Player of the Week, none other than Bo Cordell, the graduate student out of Cincinnati, Ohio from Indian Hill High School, finished the day 32 of 55 for 349 yards, a couple of touchdowns, establishing a new Division II record surpassing that of Zach and Lidro, 14,733 yards. Bo now sits at 15,049 yards, which is fifth in all divisions. Did have 11 carries for just three yards, sacked four times times for his career versus Wingett had been sacked 20 times. He's 20, his 25th 300 yard day in the last 34 games though against Wingett. He's the NCAA record holder for yards, yards per game at 350, total offensive yards per game at 353, and com career completions per game at 30 per contest. Now, the passing mark good, but now Bo needs just 915 total offensive yards for a new NCAA Division II record once again. Bo is a member of the Good Works team and a semifinalist for the Campbell Trophy. Justin Houston, also our Sodexo Offensive Player of the Week, the sophomore from Cleveland, Tennessee, out of Bradley Central High School. What a year this kid is having, a career for most receivers. 11 receptions, 120 yards, two touchdowns, now 73 receptions, 823 yards on the season with five receiving touchdowns. He's the NCAA leader in receptions per game and second in receiving yards per game. Our Greenville Light and Power defensive player of the game, Kashad Lyons, known as Big Country, out of Ellenwood, Georgia from Woodland High School. The junior finished with a career high eight tackles, two for loss, two quarterback hurries, and a pass breakup. Those eight tackles tie a career high he established versus Catawba. Now 79 tackles, six for loss for his career. Our Green Coach Tours special teams players of the week. We'll start with our punter, Logan Haynes, the junior from Dublin, Virginia, Pulaski High School. Finished the day with four punts, a 33.2 yard average, improvising on a fourth down long play for a rush of 60 yards and also had a long, as mentioned, his career long of 60 yards. Matt Levine, the junior from Anderson, South Carolina from Westside High School, was great on special teams all day. For the day offensively, he ties a career high for receptions in a game with five for 46 yards. And Justin Houston, electrifying 99-yard touchdown run. He's also our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Player of the Week. He had averaged 18.9 yards per kickoff return average, which was sixth in the South Atlantic Conference, but he finishes with 144 yards on the day. Our Special Teams Players of the Week. There were plenty of the day, plenty of highlight-type catches or even highlight-type hits or interceptions, but you would have to say two on this day earn credit for our Andrew Johnson Bank call of the game. It started early with the opening kickoff with Justin Houston and also early in the game, Bo Cordell establishing a new career record for passing yards in a career. Houston drifts back to the one near sideline and will take it to the far sideline, 15, 20. Houston with the seam at the 30, comes to the near sideline at the 40, to the 45, needs a block at midfield, gets it 45, 40. Justin Houston to the 30, Justin with another block at the 20. Houston will take it 99 yards to Pater. Touchdown, Pioneers. 
Touchdown, Justin Houston. Cordell trying to pull the Bulldogs off sides. They do it successfully. Cordell has a free play, and he'll go to Deion Hicks for the record. Caught it at the 45 and down to the 32-yard line. It's a first and 10 for the Pioneers, and put your name in the record books. Bo Cordell linked to Deion Hicks in the history books of Division II. Our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up sees that the Wingate Bulldogs finish with 26 first downs to the Pioneers 27. Wingate, unfortunately, as we've already mentioned in the show, was next to last in rushing offense as a team. But they finished with 142 and Nestor Lantigua, a career-high 144 on the day. Pioneers did rush for 112 yards on the afternoon. Net passing, Robbie Nolan Wegg was 334 yards passing, Bo Cordell 349 yards passing. Nolan Wegg was the national leader in completion percentage. Finished 22 of 34. That completion percentage will take a bit of a hit. Did throw an interception, a couple of touchdowns. Bo was 32 of 55. No interceptions on the day. Total offense, Pioneers ran 88 plays for 461 yards. Wingate, 71 plays for 476 yards. Plenty of penalties in the game. We talked about 18 combined, 10 for Wingate, 8 for the Tusculum Pioneers. Time of possession, Wingate, 29 minutes, 46 seconds. The Pioneers, 30 minutes, 14 seconds. Third downs, Wingate, 5 of 11. The Pioneers were 7 of 18, but just 2 of 5 on fourth down. Wingate was 0 for 2. In the red zone, 5 of 6 for Wingate. The Pioneers, unfortunately, just 2 of 4 on the day. We come back, we'll wrap up the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market, just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Green County. So Cornelius will attempt a 41-yard effort. The kick is away, end over end toward the upright, and he splits them. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. The Pioneers fall this past Saturday to the Wingate Bulldogs and take on Pembroke this coming Saturday. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but first we're proud to be joined by the head athletic trainer here at Tusculum College, Chris Linker. Chris, thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. Happy take, to be here. Take me through a, a typical week for maybe not necessarily just you, but your training staff. Yep, no, that, that's fine. I appreciate you mentioning my staff. Um, I do have a staff of six in addition to myself, certified athletic trainers. Um, newest addition is Jeffrey Dunkling, started back in, uh, in August. He was our seventh full-time certified athletic trainer. That's quite a luxury to have at a school mm -hmm. our size. We're, we're very lucky. Um, I have been at Tusculum for 14 years. This is my 10th year working with the football team. And a typical week uh, with football, uh, you could say, I guess, starts on Saturday. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of the, the fun day. That's kind of the, the dessert day. A lot of, the, uh, a lot of us say that we, you know, we go through all the the hours in the early mornings and the, in the late nights just to just to run through that tunnel 11 times a year so um, so starting with Saturday obviously we're uh, we're there on the sidelines we have our full support staff I typically will have an assistant with me uh, I have a full complement of students we do have a student program here at Tusculum right now I have six undergraduate students assigned to football and they'll join me on the sideline we'll have one of our team physicians we're also lucky to have uh, to be well served by several team physicians um, and really just being there for, for the student athletes during the game. Uh, we get here about four hours before game, um, start setting up the field, start moving equipment where it needs to go. Uh, starting about two and a half hours before the game, we'll start taping and uh, treating our football players. Walk down to the field about an hour and a half before, and, and from there it's just kind of on autopilot. And, and like I said, we're just oh, always aware of watching what's going on in the field, but also watching what's going on on the benches behind, uh, trying to make sure that we're 
appropriately treating any injuries that we see, making sure that people that get back on the field should be on the field and mm -hmm. those that shouldn't be on the field are off, uh, make sure they're appropriately evaluated. Uh, important to make sure that our coaches know who's in and out and that kind of thing. So there's, there's a lot going on during the course of a game. Um, the day after a game is it's always interesting because there's injuries that happen in the course of a football game and sometimes the athletes don't even know that they've been right. injured and they wake up that Sunday morning and they think, you know, this ain't right. Yeah, so, it does. Uh, so a lot of times we'll, we'll see them for the first time on Sunday prior to practice and there's a lot of evaluating, a lot of treatment that goes on on that day. We're fortunate to have Mondays off, so we can we have the benefit of kind of stacking two off days in a row if we need to um, between Sunday and Monday. And then Tuesday and Wednesday are banging days. Those are our, those are our full contact days typically in practice. And um, a typical day then would be uh, seeing students in the morning for morning treatments at 7, and then prior to practice just trying to get everybody squared away, uh, taped, braced, whatever we need to do just to get them through the appropriate level of, uh, of activity for Tuesday, Wednesday. And then Thursday, typically by Thursday, we, we start to have a pretty good idea who's going to be in and who's going to be out on a typical week. Um, and uh, if, you know, if it's apparent that a student athlete is going to be out for the game on Thursday, we'll really start tailoring treatment to getting them back for the following game week. So uh, there's always those game time decisions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's always the guys that have the coaches on the edge of their seats come even Saturday morning. Um, but uh, typically by Thursday, we have a pretty good idea who's going to be available for the game. That takes us back to, to Saturday, and like yeah. I said, that's kind of the fun day for everybody. So. You, know, you started with the dessert, so you started know. with dessert. I do that at home too. Yeah. <laughs> so my MO. Made Greenville his home. You've been here a little while. Uh, you've been very comfortable uh, now raising a family, young Addison, uh, growing up here in, in town. How have you liked to have you embraced the town? Oh, it's it's unbelievable, and I, I tell people I'm not ashamed to say when I started at Tuscan was really my first job out of graduate school. And as many people do, um, had kind of a, a, an unclear picture of what I wanted to do when I grew up, quote unquote, and thought, you know, I'll spend some time here, perhaps move on, and fell in love with the school, fell in love with the coaching staff, uh, fell in love with South Atlantic Conference. Just everything is unbelievable at Tuscaloosa College facilities. Um, we're, you know, we're spoiled by the facilities, the coaches, the two sports that I work closely uh, with, football and baseball. Uh, I was talking to somebody this morning. They have the same head coaches, and a lot of the a lot of the staff is intact from, even from when I started mm -hmm. way back. So, um, you know, I, I I can't I could not have been treated any better than I've been treated. And, and like you said, I've kind of made Greenville my home. And and uh, my wife Lauren our, and our uh, six year old son Addison are happy as happy as can be here. And so life is good. That's great. And you know, I came in. Mike Goforth was here, mm -hmm. and then you came in right after him. So I, I've only seen two really <laughs> head athletic trainers here at Tuscaloosa as well. Doctors that we use, obviously, you mentioned yep. that the physicians are there actually on, on game day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how involved are they? And, and introduce some of those. To very, us. very much so. And we're fortunate to work with uh, primarily Watauga Orthopedics, or uh, outfit out of Johnson City, and they've been working with us for probably the last eight or nine years, I think. Um, they do a great job with our student athletes and make themselves available uh, if we need to get somebody up to either see a physician in clinic or they have on-site MRI, and, and they really do a good job getting our people in. Uh, they do make campus visits. They come down and evaluate our student athletes here on campus. And like I said, they're they're here on game day, either at home, they go on the road with us. There's always somebody here on football games. Um, can't say enough about uh, about them. The, the physicians from there that work most closely with us are Dr. Eric Parks and uh, Dr. Todd Fowler and Dr. Mark Aiken, who's worked with us for years and years and years. And, and they're all uh, great to us, do a good job. Um, Dr. Daniel Lewis is a physician here in town. He's actually chief medical officer at uh, Tacoma Hospital mm -hmm. and works out at Tacoma Medical Associates during the week. And same thing, he makes himself available uh, by phone or in person, just you know, uh, on on an unbelievable basis. And mm -hmm. really, really is quite good. Um, and uh, we also have a chiropractor that we work with very closely. Dr. Bill Frost uh, comes over to campus generally on Thursdays and is, is good about getting our student athletes in. So we feel well covered. We feel like our, our student athletes have uh, have the benefit of some great physicians and, and they really bend over backwards to help us out. A lot of kids out there hopefully watching this show that are probably sitting here, you know, thinking, well, we're not talking about football, but then they're also thinking, hey, this could be my life, this could be my career. How, do, how would a student come in here to Tuscaloosa? You talked about the facilities. Uh, they're obviously top notch. To become that physician to hang around a college football mm -hmm. team or any type of athletic team uh, for their career. Yeah, well, a, a lot of us struggled uh, struggled with that time frame at the end of high school where we were we were athletes, we were interested in athletics, 
but it was very clear that none of us had a career, you know, as an <laughs> athlete. But uh, I was fortunate to find athletic training early on, even in, in uh, high school, and recognize it as a way to stay involved with athletics, uh, recognize it as a way to, you know, to kind of help people if that's, you know, if that's what you're passionate about, and also be around the competitive uh, student athletes or competitive athletes. Um, the way that somebody becomes a certified athletic trainer is they go through what's called an approved uh, curriculum program, and there's websites, uh, the NATA is the National Athletic Trainers Association, the NATA BOC is our board of certification, and they're actually the accrediting body for uh, certified athletic trainers, uh, and both of those websites can direct you to um, information on who has accredited programs, and we're mm -hmm. fortunate to have one here at Tuscombe. We have, as long as I've been here, uh, and even before, when it was the old curriculum route, but you matriculate through a uh, through a curriculum program. It involves uh, a great deal of um, classroom education, obviously, and also clinical yeah. education. That's when I mention our six students right now that are assigned to football. We have many more, obviously, uh, but their experience with football is to gain clinical education, gain that hands-on um, education. And following graduation, you take a national certifying exam, and most. I think 49 of the 50 states now either have uh, licensure for certified athletic trainers as a health care provider or they have their own registration or certification process. So um, many of our students will go on to graduate school either for additional experience or to pursue another uh, degree. Some of our students will, will kind of branch off and go into associated fields. We've had graduates that have gone on to physical therapy school, uh, graduates that have gone into nursing and things like right. that. So again, a, a lot of people recognize athletic training as you know kind of a jack of all trades, and, and they get in there and they get their hands dirty, they get comfortable seeing patients, and then they decide after graduate school if they want to you know stick with the athletic training side or if they want to branch off. Uh, so it's, it's an interesting field. It's one that can really lead you to a lot of different places, and uh, we're we're proud of our program, proud of our students and graduates. Visit online. Tusculum.edu, sure. see what Tusculum has. Chris Linker has always, uh, the sense of humor for Chris is over the top. Is there a Linker nugget that we have, uh, stat of the day? Do you have a particular stat you could share with us at this particular moment? I don't. Uh, well, but wait till baseball season happens because <laughs> it'll happen. Trust me. Chris, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, head athletic trainer here at Tusculum College. He's Chris Linker. We're back with more to wrap up the Frankie DeBus Show right after this, presented by Bojangles. That's a wrap, Scotty. Let's break for lunch, guys. All right, it's boat time. Cajun filet sandwich. Right here. Hey, I had a Cajun filet sandwich. Hey, relax, man. We got more. Smoked sausage biscuit. That's me. But you have a Cajun filet sandwich. So what's your point? Man, you can't have breakfast and lunch together. That doesn't work. Works for me. I call it brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Bojangles and try our seasoned hickory flavored smoked sausage on a made from scratch biscuit for just 99 cents. Bojangles, it's bo time. Anything you'll ever need to rent or buy is at Grand Rental Station. Business, commercial, or residential, from forklifts to backhoes to tents, party goods, wedding supplies, and much more. On the Andrew Johnson Highway in Greenville, Grand Rental Station, 639-6160. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Whenever there's a project to make our community a better place to live, you'll always find our local merchants right there doing all they can to help. From sponsoring the kids' ball teams to serving barbecue at a community picnic, they're always there. Be community-minded. Shop and invest locally. Greenville Federal Bank, member FDIC. Banking made easy. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. Pioneers fall to Wingate by a final of 41 to 33. Coach, in the in the game, we've talked about this probably at length, and now to the point where even after the game, talking with Bo, he was like, you know, I, I think this is all great. It's the system. I came in here. Mark Kolb says, here's the keys. Here's my offense. You're going to set records, and and he's done that. He's followed his part. He's good enough to do that. 
He's frustrated he's not getting wins, though. Uh, Brian, we all are. I, I hate that uh, Bo's career is going to be one of numbers and not one of victories. I know he would love to, to have that more so, but phenomenal kid. Uh, happy that he's getting to break some records. Happy his name will be in the record books, and who knows for how long, but it's at least there right now. And, you know, Tuscum College deserves to get as much credit as anybody, but uh, as an individual, He's about as good a kid as we've ever had around here, and I'm happy for him. Zach Amidro, the former record holder, broke that in 2010. So that record has only stood for three years. Justin Houston established a record that Ricardo Coakley established all the way back early part of this decade. But go back to the early part of the 1990s when Brian Alexander chasing down the tackle record this week against Pembroke will have an opportunity to put his name in the record books as well, and likely, barring something crazy happening to Brian, should happen on Saturday. I'm looking forward to Brian breaking the record. He's another unbelievable kid and a great leader on our football team, and he just needs a few few tackles to make it happen, and uh, I hope his name can be in the record books for many, many years as well. All right, Bo Cordell is also chasing another record, the total offensive mark of Division II. He needs 915 yards, three games to do that, and you're thinking that's impossible, right? He's averaging 345 a game total offense. So the likelihood is there for Bo Cordell. We'll see, obviously, by Mars Hill if that does happen. Now you take on a Pembroke team likely not going to be in the top 10, fresh off a loss to Newberry. Uh, what type of team are we going to see in UNC Pembroke? Obviously very good just to have very, lost for the first time. Very talented. Very talented football team. <clears throat> I thought the last few times we played them, they had as much talent as anybody we've played. Uh, played them here last year and actually let one get away from us. We, mm -hmm. I think we lost 20 to 10, but uh, we got to go to Pembroke with a completely different attitude. We got to find a way to finish this thing off and uh, make the trip and do what we got to do to get us a win. Coach, unfortunate. Thank you for your time. You, Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk as the Pioneers fall to Wingate this past Saturday. We'll try to right that wrong this Saturday against Pembroke. Won't be easy, but you can listen or follow along with us on the Pioneer Sports Network, AM 1450 WSMG worldwide through TuscalumPioneers.com. Our Pioneer kickoff show coverage will begin at 2 o'clock. Kickoff will be 3 o'clock, Tusculum versus the UNC Pembroke Braves. For everyone here at the Frankie DeBus Show, Perry Morgan, thanks for the video. For Nathan Humbert, for Chris Linker, for Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus, I'm Brian Staten. Until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by You're in a Bojangles Town, Greenville, home of the Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's Bow Time. Bojangles, title sponsor for the Frankie DeBusk Show. Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, home of the big deal, located on the 11 e Bypass in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Greenville Federal Bank, celebrating over 50 years of service in Greenville and Green County. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.